Hey everybody, it's Christopher Small from CMS Law Firm here today to talk to you about some more fun estate planning strategies, tips, tricks, tactics, and maybe give you a little bit of advice to help you out. Um, as always though, before we get going, if you have questions or needs or you don't have an estate plan and you want to talk to someone about it, please go to estatemeeting.com and set up a time to talk with me for free. It's simple, it's easy. You get to talk with me just like I'm talking to you right now. And I guarantee you by the time that you're done, uh, you're gonna feel better about your situation. You're gonna be able to make a, a, an informed decision about what you wanna do to protect your family and protect yourself, all right? But that's not why we're here right now. We're here to answer the question of the day, which is something that I get asked fairly frequently, um, involves a lot of myth and mystery and um, you know um, fog right as, as we're answering this because it's shrouded in mystery and but I, I actually I literally had a conversation with somebody about it today and I thought it would be a great topic to hop on here and talk about H however before I get on here and talk I, I really 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 want to make sure that you understand that before you make any decisions like this that we're talking about today with when it comes to Medicaid eligibility before you make any decisions related to that please, please, please talk to someone, okay? You don't have to talk to me, but talk to someone because this is an area that you can really mess up if you're not careful, and it can really have some, some very bad consequences for you, okay? So, so don't, don't do anything, okay? This is information that I want you to have. It's important, it's valuable, it can help you make a decision, but don't make any final decision until you at least talk to someone specifically about your, your situation, okay? Hopefully, I got myself across and made that clear enough, clear as mud, great. So what we're gonna talk about right now is, should you give away your house to your kids or to someone else in order to uh, either, or sort of uh, not maintain, but, but create um, some Medicaid eligibility? To give you sort of a little bit of quick background, um, eligibility is based on need. And your house, while not um, um, necessarily in that need equation um, it does factor in and, and Medicaid can't put a lien against your house to collect the the, the uh, services that they provided to you um, after you die okay and some people want to try to avoid that by giving away their assets there's one other thing that you need to know if you believe that you may be eligible for Medicaid or if you apply for Medicaid what they do is they're gonna look back um, in time, five years, and see if you've made any gratuitous transfers to try to uh, skirt the system and, and uh, become eligible for Medicaid even though you should not have, okay? So that's where this question comes from. Uh, people think, well, I maybe they know from an asset perspective they might be on the threshold of, of being eligible for Medicaid at some day, uh, eligible for Medicaid someday, and they wanna try to be proactive about getting rid of this house so that uh, they can have something to give to their to their families when they're gone. That's fine. What's important though is that there are a couple of things that you are, are giving up, a couple of risks that you're taking uh, by giving your house away. The first and most important thing that you are doing is A, you have to understand that if something happens to you within five years, that transfer is going to be seen as one of those gratuitous type of transfers and you're gonna be stuck, okay? That doesn't mean that you shouldn't do this, uh, but it's definitely something to consider, all right? There are other downsides as well. The, the biggest downside is that if you gift your home or gift anything of value to your kids or to anybody else while you are alive, you miss out on what's called a step up in basis, okay? So to, gosh, I'm just, I'm just dropping some real legal knowledge today. I am in the definitions game today. So to, to sort of take, take a step back and explain what that is, when you buy anything, let's say you buy a house, you bought your, your house in, in 1990, okay? And when you bought your house in 1990, it was worth $100,000, okay? You bought it for $100,000. And you've lived in that house now for, for, it's 2019, for 30, what is that? 39 years, right? I think that's right. No, 29 years. You live in the house for 29 years, now that house is worth a million dollars, okay? You've, made, you've bought and 
up and coming neighborhood and now you you are seeing the rewards of that potentially at least on your balance sheet by having owning a million dollar asset that that you only bought for a hundred thousand dollars so you have nine hundred thousand dollars of growth in that house from the time that you bought it from now okay now if you give that house away right now what's going to happen is the person that you give it to is going to take that asset with the cost basis that you acquired the property for okay so what that means is when you give that property to the person they're going to take it with a cost basis of one hundred thousand dollars okay this is important because when they go to sell that house in the future or if they sell it in the future they are going to sell it and then pay tax as if you had bought it basically what that means is on that nine hundred thousand dollars of gain of appreciation that that have been realized since you bought the house from to, to when it was sold you're gonna have to pay about 20 percent tax on that so that's a lot uh what is that nine hundred eighty thousand dollars in taxes okay now if you would have waited to give that house away um, until you passed away then there would be you get what's called a step up in basis what a step up in basis is you get to take that property at today's value so when you sell it or when your when your kids sell it or when whoever sells it they're gonna take that um, house at the cost basis of today which means they're gonna pay no capital gains taxes which means they have just saved one hundred and eighty thousand uh, dollars that they would have had to pay to Uncle Sam Christina what's up that they would not have had to pay otherwise um, so this is a critically important element of deciding whether or not to give your house away that a lot of people don't realize and don't think about until it's too late and then they're stuck the heirs have this big tax bill that they didn't know about and, you, and the gift that you thought you were giving is actually much smaller than you than you thought because you have to pay this tax um, at the time that the property is sold okay um, the other thing to remember another consideration is when you give your house away to your kids or your or anybody else um, you are giving up 100% control of that asset okay um, you may think oh I trust that person they're never gonna it's never gonna be a problem but they can do a couple of stupid things that you don't know about or they don't even know about and they can mess this whole thing up okay let me give you stupid thing number one stupid thing number one is for example they could um, they could retitle after you give it to them they could retitle the name that house in the name of them and their spouse you know they think it's the right thing to do they're in love or whatever and then they get divorced okay when that happens that house is getting chopped up in that divorce okay another thing that could happen is let's say your kid is just a normal person they're driving home from work and they fall asleep or they are texting or whatever something it doesn't matter and they get in an accident and somebody gets really hurt really badly and it's their fault okay and let's say they get a huge judgment against them a million bucks okay anything that is owned by that person is is eligible to be sort of taken away from them to satisfy that judgment including your house so you could wake up one day and find out that because you know little baby Sarah or whatever I don't, I don't know I don't know I'm just making stuff up now because your, your kid did something stupid that house is gone okay and what you thought was a good idea to avoid Medicaid has now become a terrible idea because not only have you lost the value of the home so um, that's another consideration to make is that when you give this asset away you're giving it away all the way the other thing that could happen by the way that, that nobody really talks about is what if your kids are kind of scandalous they get mad at you or you get mad at them and then they just decide to put the house up for sale there's no way that you can stop that there's nothing that you can do um, you have given the house away so just another important consideration to make at the end of the day I don't care what you do I tell all my clients this I literally I do not care okay I don't care I have no no dog in this fight this is your house this is your family this is you can do whatever you want okay but my number one goal the only thing that I want you to do is to make informed decisions okay take all of this information that I've just given you weigh out the pros and cons think about what's important to you and your family and what's important to your goals as far as protecting yourself and protecting your family and then make whatever decision you want and, and do it right that's all that matters okay there's nothing worse though than making a decision where you don't know what's gonna happen completely and then something happens that you didn't expect and there's no way to fix it okay that's what happens here okay in estate planning a lot of stuff is not fixable <laughs> okay so just don't do it 
first. That's why at the beginning, by the way, and I'll say it one more time, if you are thinking about doing this or if you've considered doing this and you've heard this information and now you're ready to take action, please, please, please don't do anything until you go talk to someone and lay out your specific situation, show them all of your finances, show them all of your property that you own, and then tell them what you wanna do and let them give you very, very specific information about the benefits and consequences of making decisions like this. Again, I'm not saying that you should know, you, anyone's gonna tell you if it's a good idea or a bad idea, but because of your asset makeup, you can have very, very different consequences because of your actions than even that I'm talking about here right now in this video. Um, so please talk to somebody. If you wanna to talk to me, that's great. I would love to talk to you. If you have estate planning questions, uh, uh, otherwise too, go to estatemeeting.com, set up a time to talk with me. I'd love to do it and um, super simple. All right, that is it. I'm Christopher Small with CMS Law Firm. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, Christina, thanks for coming on. I'm, I'm glad you liked the topic. That's my cousin. So she's got like family love. She has to say that it's good no matter what. Uh, but that's okay, I'll take what I can get. If you like this video, please hit the like button. If you know someone that needs to hear it, please share it with them. Um, and if you have a question or comment, please leave it below. I will, I will get to it. I, I will answer you. I will respond, I promise. Okay, that's it. Thank you so much for your time today. And um, I will see you again later.